as like something that you would see in the movies or something like that. You never thought of stuff like that would even happen. We just threw everything that we had in the car and we just left. And three days later after the hurricane, we came back and stuff was just crazy. When I made it into Lake Charles, I was just like, this is not Lake Charles. I was just praying everybody had made it out. Some breaking news in our national lead where Hurricane Laura is rapidly intensifying at this hour. The latest warning described unsurvivable. The governor says emergency crews will start search and rescue missions as soon as it's safe to do so to help out our friends near the Lake Charles area and other parts of southwest Louisiana. Now Delta made landfall in the same area hit by Laura and the people there are still trying to get back on their feet. Before we moved back, we was at my grandmother, my aunt, his aunt, some of his friends, some of my friends, hotels. It was a lot of running around. And then being at different places with a six-year-old little girl, it, it's crazy. Okay, so. Nine plus two is No, nine minus two. That's nine. When we got here, we had a tree on the corner of our house. Um, screen doors was blown off. It was just like nobody was here. Like it was just zombie land. Shingles was all over the place. Fences was down in the backyard. We got two big holes in the roof. When it rains, it, it drips. It start dripping in. Not a heavy drip, but it's like, it's a constant drip where it's, it's noticeable. And you can hear it dripping, especially on the back. I don't want to take it all the way down because I don't want to get it all over her bed. But just to give you a kind of idea, the installation soaks up the water. It just falls. Like all of this literally breaks into like little, little, be like fine pieces. And this is what we're breathing in. This is what my six-year-old has to breathe in. This is what FEMA saying that our house is livable when it's not livable. Any assistance or anything dealing with FEMA or whoever else trying to help with assistance Will, you'll get denied because you're able to live in your home. And I mean, it's really not livable, but where else do you have to go? I mean, we can't just be out on the streets. And I don't think that's fair. At times, you, you know, you can get discouraged. And, you know, it's a lot that be on your shoulder. And, you know, it's just like you don't know what to do. We're actually still in, a, in appeal with FEMA right now. The first funding we got from FEMA was September 9th, I want to say, when they gave everyone the $500 miscellaneous um, for like food, gas, and stuff like that. And they gave me $1,000 for $10,000 worth of merchandise that I lost. COVID-19 actually stopped my employment. Filed for unemployment and I'm only getting 124 a week, 120 after taxes. That's only enough to just to pay the rent, only. Then you have all the other bills and food. And on top of that, thank God, they're still giving SNAP benefits out. Because if they wasn't, we wouldn't know what to do. I don't think no one in Lake Charles has been treated fair at all. No one's getting no kind of help. If you would have looked out this window a couple months ago, you would have actually seen a lot more tarps on buildings. You would have seen a lot more blue roofs. And so that's kind of a, a good show of progress or sign of progress is you still see a lot, but it's not as many as it was 60 days ago. There's not a lot of communities in this country that can say right now that they went through everything else that 2020 has brought us in addition to two uh, major hurricanes, and we have gone through that here in Lake Charles. The residents that are frustrated right now absolutely are validated in those frustrations. And everyone has their own story. I've spoken with some people who say their insurance companies have taken care of them. I seem to speak with more who say that they have issues with their insurance company. I have spoken with some people who are happy with the response they have received from FEMA. I seem to speak with many more who wish that FEMA was quicker and wish that they could receive some 
housing assistance quicker. There are more things I think that FEMA could do without the uh, signature of the president that, that I do wish would happen sooner rather than later. One of my concerns is, again, because we're going through such a, I'm just gonna say a weird political climate right now, it may now be until after a new president gets in office in, on January 20th before anything significant more would happen. And I think that would be an absolute travesty. The city of Lake Charles has limitations in what we can do. First of all, we can't just print money like the federal government. We have financial limitations. We have um, legal limitations as to what we can do and, and can't do with city funds. Our best estimate right now from the city of Lake Charles uh, Inside the city limits, which has a population of about 80,000, is we have between three to 4,000 people that are still displaced. Some of those individuals are in non-congregate shelters, uh, in hotels. I've been here since the day after Laura, the hurricane, the first hurricane. I stayed in an apartment complex, and the whole apartment complex was destroyed, so I'm pretty sure they didn't tore it down. I haven't been back there since, but I'm pretty sure it's tore down by now because it was molded all the way through. We lost everything in, in the hurricane, everything. I'm trying to go back home. My wife worked there. I worked there. You know, my, my kids go to school there. For them being away from home, being away from school, their friends, you know, like the whole just neighborhood thing, to this, I don't want to start over like that. You already got to start over anyway. Since I, I experienced this right here, I see like FEMA, Red Cross, all the organizations that got something to do with it come to you like you, you want something or you asking for something or you know like you need this shit. Like I had a whole life before I got here. Like I don't need no hand, I, but give us a place to go back. We supposed to live in America. That means America's supposed to help us out. I see a lot of people getting put out of these motels, and I feel that's wrong for them to get put out on the streets with no ride home. How they getting home? Like this lady right here. Like, you don't know her struggle. You don't know what kind of life she lived. So you gonna throw her out on the street after she just went through all this? Two hurricanes. Two. Hey, they evicted us. Do you know anybody out here that I could go stay with? We lost everything, and this is everything we own now. This is what we got left. They came this morning and told us we were too loud last night, that we were getting kicked out. Every day somebody gets kicked out. Well, most time it's two or three people. I need help, and I don't know where I'm supposed to get this help from. I'm hurt, I'm angry, I, I'm confused. I, I don't know what to do. They could have left us back home, and we would have been a lot better off than we are right now on these streets of New Orleans. It doesn't feel good at all. This is wrong. Somebody's gotta come get us and break us home. If we took buses and brought all those people back into Lake Charles right now, we would have three or 4,000 homeless people in Lake Charles sleeping on the streets. We keep pressing for those federal resources. We keep pressing FEMA to move as quickly as possible. FEMA could tomorrow expedite negotiations for some of those pad sites for mobile units here in Calcasieu Parish. So the longer that those negotiations take with these uh, landowners, the longer people are living in some homes that are not in safe conditions or living in hotel rooms. We need to get them back. We need to get them back here to Lake Charles. We want our family, we want our friends home. It's very tiresome. All of this is tiresome, especially having to wake up every day acting like it's normal. This is not a normal living for no one. 